with everything that's been going on recently, I found myself with a little bit more time at home. That's time that I would have normally spent teaching art one-to-one -one or in group tutorials where I teach printmaking. I thought it would be really useful to spend that time productively and I wanted to create a little bit more online content for you. Uh, so I'm planning a new video every weekday, Monday to Friday, with a different theme each week. Well, I'll take you through something uh, that will be absolutely suitable for beginners and uh, I'll show you some of the processes that I use in my art. I'll also have some other videos in future weeks that are about other kinds of making and uh, maybe sewing one. Um, I've got lots of ideas and lots of things planned but if you've got any suggestions then do leave them in the comments down below. This week is all about fine liner art. So we're going to start by creating a pattern grid like this and then move on to work on some floral patterns and some mandalas like these ones. Now these look quite complex but I'll show you step by step how to create results like this. So I'll be posting before the week to come uh, what the theme is going to be for the next week and I've tried to keep the, uh, the materials to things that you're likely to have at home, especially if you're someone who's, uh, who's a little bit artistic and creative anyway. Uh, but uh, there may be a few things that you might want to get in ahead of time. So I'll be posting those things on Instagram. So if you want to follow me there, it's Lou Rachel Davis. I'm looking forward to spending a little bit more time with you and I hope you enjoy these. For this, you'll need some paper. So I've got a sketchbook here. And I like a spiral bound sketchbook because you can just flip the cover over and it lays nice and flat. So if you've got some computer paper or uh, some note paper, something like that, this will work just fine. And then you'll need some kind of pen. I really like these fine liners. Um, the ones I have are from Unipin and they come in all different sizes. So the number on the side tells you how thick the pen is. So this is a 0.8 and that's the the biggest tip that I'm going to be using. And then I've got a variety of different size pens. So I've also got right down to 0.05. Can you see the difference between the two? And that just gives me a little bit of variety when I'm drawing. So these are useful, but they're not necessary. You could do this with a felted pen, with a Sharpie. You could do this with a, a biro or a rollerball. Don't let not having the same equipment as me put you off starting. Use whatever you've got, whatever's to hand. And then I've got a couple of other things that I'm going to be using. Um, so I like to use a pencil. Um, I like to use a mechanical pencil, but that's personal preference. Um, any sort of pencil will do. And then I want to be able to rub out my pencil lines. So I've got a little rubber. Mine looks really grim, but it works. That's the important thing. This is like a soft, kneadable eraser. Uh, but I really like it because it doesn't leave any marks on the paper. You may want a ruler, but it's not necessary. And then for some of the exercises, you might like to use a pair of compasses, but these are not important. So if you don't already have them, don't need to run out and buy them. So for the first exercise, we're going to divide our paper into uh, little squares or rectangles, and then we're going to do a different pattern in each one. So I'm going to divide them up using the pencil to start with and I'm going to use the pencil very lightly because I want to be able to rub out these lines at the end so you can't see them. At this point you could use a ruler and draw your lines in with a ruler but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start dividing the page vertically into four. So I'm going to start at the top of the page and I'm just going to judge roughly where the centre is and I'm going to put a little mark there. And then I'm going to hold my hand on the edge of the page. So my little finger there is resting up against the edge of the page and the tip of the pencil is where I've drawn that mark. And then I use the edge of the page to guide me and I just pull my arm towards me. And I get a reasonably straight line right down the centre of the page. Now this section I'm going to divide into two again and put a mark there. 
It's not exact, it doesn't have to be, not for this exercise. And again, I'm going to hold my little finger on the edge of the page, put the uh, tip of the pencil down, and then pull my arm towards me. And now I'm going to do the same across the page. So I'm going to mark out where roughly I think the middle is. And I'm holding this part of the hand against the bottom of the page and moving my hand along like that. And then I want to divide each section of the page up into three. So I want to put two marks in this time. And draw along again using my hand along the edge of the page to guide me to keep it straight. So now we've got a grid of pencil marks and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the top row and I'm going to do four of the simplest patterns that I can think of in those four top squares. So in the top left corner I think I'm going to do some little dots so all I do is I draw a circle and then I'll fill it in. And then I'll draw another circle and then I'll fill it in. And I'm going to keep going until I filled the whole of the square. Now I want to imagine that my pattern is extending beyond the boundaries of the square. So where I've got a line, I might want to draw half a circle and then fill that in. And maybe there might be one on the corner, so I'll just draw a little bit of a circle and fill in right up to the corner. So I'm quite happy with this pattern. It's really simple, but that's the point. And then I'm going to move on to the next square. And I want to do something completely different in this square. So I think what I will do is I'm going to do some stripes, but I'm going to do them at a 45 degree angle. So I'll start in this corner and just start drawing a line. There we go. And then I'm going to come down about the same distance again and try and keep my lines parallel. We're going to do a little bit more of a tricky pattern for our next one and we're going to do a little scallop shape. So I want to mentally divide my section into three so I'm going to put two little marks in it and I'm going to start at this corner here and I'm going to draw a little half circle that's going to take me around until I finish at this point here. There we go. And I'll draw another one the same height next to it. And then another one to take me to the end of that square. And then the next row, I want to have the point of them here. So there, there and there. That means that the height the, at the top part of the, uh, the scallop will come out of the side here, like that. And then I draw another one and another one and then draw the last one in there. So you've got two on the end that are like half a scallop shape. And then the third row is exactly the same as the first one. And then the top row, you can only see a little bit of it, but I'm going to put them in anyway. Just these little V-shapes. And that's it. And the fourth one, I want to do something with straight lines again, but something a little bit more complicated than this. So I'm going to do a chevron pattern. So in a very similar way, to the way I did this one, I'm going to mark out, and this I think I want four, so I'm going to put three little points there, 
and I'm going to mark out a point above each of those. So I've got some four equally spaced gaps and then I've got above it another little point halfway between those gaps. And then I just use my pen and join all the dots together. Now I want to do stripes of this all the way up. So I'm going to follow the line that I drew before. And then at the bottom here I've got these triangles and I want to just extend the pattern this way by drawing some little upturned V's in there. And that's my fourth pattern. So the idea with this is we start with very simple patterns on the top row and as we work down the page the patterns get more interesting and more complex. So by the time you've got to the bottom of your grid you've got some really interesting different patterns that you can use in your artwork. So what I'd like you to do for the second row is to look at the square above and look at the pattern there and say how can I do this again but make it slightly different. So, for example, I've got little dots in here. What I could do in this one is I could make them all different sizes. So, let's do that. So, for the stripes, I think I'm going to do the stripes in the same direction. I'm just going to bunch some of them up together a little bit more closely. So let's start again in this corner and I'm going to do three, four stripes together and then leave a bit of a gap and then I'll do another four stripes. And it's okay to stop and start halfway through a line if you need to reposition your hand. Now for the scallop shapes, I think I'll, um, I'll stick with the same shapes, but I think they, they look a little empty. They could do something in them. So far, this is looking exactly the same. So what I need to do is go through and add a level of detail into every scallop and then carry that on through the whole thing. So let's start by echoing this shape. And let's just keep going until I've filled everyone in. So little rainbows on the bottom, that's what these look like. What could I do to make the chevrons a bit different? Well, let's start with the, the row of little chevrons along the bottom again. So let's make our marks there. And then what if we joined this line up so we had a little row of triangles? And then we could do the same with the top row. So we could do our second row that echoes this. And then we could draw a line and join all of those points together. And we're just going to keep on doing this every row, looking at the one above and saying, what can I do that's slightly different? And then doing another pattern down here.
So for this one I've done my stripes uh, going this way but then I decided to cross them and go this way as well and then I've just coloured in the small squares where they meet in the centre. So I started doing these scallops a little smaller and I thought they looked a bit like feathers so I thought I'd do the flight of the feather and then some indication of the kind of direction of the feathers. Um, yeah, it looks more like a little forest now I think with little tree branches. So I like the concentric circles there and I just thought I'd see what happens if I just did one and continued it to the edge. And it gets harder and harder to draw the nice straight circle as you get further and further out. But that's okay, I don't mind a few wobbly lines. With this one I've done a very similar pattern to the one above but I've put three uh, stripes close together. And then what I want to see is what happens if I just um, fill in every other one. So I think because I've put three, an odd number of rows together, um, I'll get a really interesting uh, pattern when I follow through. So with this one I've just started with this one in the middle and I've filled them in just with little stripes uh, rather than filling them in completely. It'll just be a little bit quicker and I quite like the way it looks on these bigger squares. So it's a little bit hard to keep track of where you are, but if you just work to uh, filling in every other square um, and just concentrate on the little squares that you're doing at the minute, uh, then you'll get there. So now I want to see what happens if, my, if I make my scallops really long. So I think I'm going to do them maybe a third of the way up so I can get three rows in. So now I have released the triangles, they are floating free and going in all sorts of different directions. So what can I do with this concentric circle to make it different? Well, let's see about making them bigger and then putting something in between the, uh, the rings of the circle. So I'm going around and putting the lines fairly far spaced out to start with. That means I can um, get them kind of going in the right direction and then I'll go back and fill in the gaps between them. So yeah, if you start doing small lines together like this, it's really easy to end up kind of going off. And that can be quite interesting if that's a look you want to go for, but I find it easier to put some nice divisions in like this and then slowly start to fill in in between them. So now I'm going to try and do some wavy lines and see what difference that makes. And then I think I'm going to fill in every other square with a circle and I want to draw the 
biggest circle that I can fit in that space. And then I want those circles to stand out a bit, so I'm going to shade them in with my little lines. Okay, what I want to do for this one is work with this shape here, this like kind of rounded kite shape, and see if I can create something that looks maybe like a field of strange trees. Okay, and then in each one I think I'm going to do, maybe on top of each one, I'll do a little ball like this. Thing going off it. Okay, and then I'm going to do just another line here on each of them. And then our triangles. So I'm going to make them a little bit bigger and I'm going to leave them open for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide each of them into three, like this. And then because they look like little paper planes, I think I'm going to fill in the space in between them with little dashed lines. I think what I'm going to do here is draw like little windmills, like this. So you've just got like the segments of those circles, but not all the way in. And then I'll do the next row here. And pull them all the way out. So now I've got something that looks a bit like a rosette or a carnation or something like that. But I had no idea when I started with these spots that that's what I'd end up with. So this pattern here, I've just squidged those triangles together so there's no gaps between them. Still divided them into three. And then I've uh, just rounded off the ends to make this nice little kind of fluted pattern. So I had no idea when I started with the chevrons here that just changing one thing every time would lead me to this pattern here. So this is our pattern grid. We've started with really simple patterns at the top and as we've moved down the sheet of paper the patterns have become more intricate and uh, more interesting. So some of the patterns work better than others but that's always going to be the case. But then from this you can pick your favourites and then work with them again. So you could, uh, you could do this whole process again and start with one of the patterns that you particularly like and then see where that takes you. Every time you do this, you'll end up with a different combination of patterns. So here's another one that I've done. So over the next few videos, I'm going to be showing you different ways that you can use patterns in your artwork. So stay tuned for those. Thanks very much for watching today, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Thanks, bye.